In the 21st century, medical research is continuing to advance at an extraordinary pace. From 2006 to today, the number of active biomedicine journals has increased by over double. And honestly, that doesn't surprise us at all. Lately at Good News, we've come across some game-changing medical discoveries every month, and there's still a lot more to uncover. From a breakthrough that'll cut cervical cancer deaths by 40%, to an AI survey that may have just eradicated superbugs from existence. Today, we dive deeper into the 10 biggest medical achievements recently made. Hey, I'm your host Regis, and first, let's take a look at some of the world's firsts that humanity has achieved. This includes a new type of artificial heart made from titanium that kept a man alive for eight days. The so-called total artificial heart will extend and save the lives of end-stage heart failure sufferers. That's because they often miss out on surgery because of long waiting times. Speaking of operations, the first partial heart transplant was also carried out in 2024. By replacing an infant's failing heart valve with a real living one, it was observed that it continued to function as the child got older. This will get rid of the need to use non-living valves as transplants, a procedure that involves operations that have a 50% mortality rate. Equally, the chances of survival have been heightened for those with type 1 diabetes. It was thanks to a transplant of her own reprogrammed stem cells that a woman's type 1 diabetes was reversed for the first time ever. After three months, she was able to produce her own insulin, and now she doesn't need any insulin injections anymore. That's pretty mind-blowing, and there's hope out there that this disease can be combated. There's also hope for those with lung problems, because the first fully robotic double lung transplant was completed last October. The Da Vinci Xi system made tiny rib incisions to remove and replace the organ. The robot-guided process has been celebrated as a milestone in surgical robotics. Another innovation that was praised in 2024 was a device that blocks epilepsy seizures by emitting electrical signals into the brain. After being surgically inserted into a young patient, the PicoStim neurotransmitter reduced the frequency of daytime seizures by an incredible 80%. Our final world's first comes from March of last year, when a genetically edited pig kidney was transplanted into a human with kidney failure. The organ in question received just under 70 genetic edits to make sure that it was accepted by the recipient. Taking it even further, critical kidney shortages could soon be a thing of the past. Moving swiftly on, let's dive into our main stories for today. Here's one of the biggest wins against cancer lately a new cervical cancer treatment that has cut the risk of dying by 40%. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common form of cancer for women globally. Over 350,000 die from it every year, and it's particularly hard to get rid of because it returns in up to 30% of cases. At the moment, a mixture of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, called chemoradiation, is the standard treatment. And it turns out that subjecting the body to even more chemotherapy is the secret to making this even more effective. Participants in the study, led by University College London, were made to undergo a short course of chemotherapy before being put through chemoradiation. And doing that reduced the risk of death by 40%, and the chance of it coming back in the next five years by 35%. That is crazy! A couple of months later, a lightning advance in the fight against brain cancer hit the headlines. Those involved were children and young adults that had a diffuse midline glioma. This is a cancerous tumor that develops in the brainstem and the spinal cord. It eventually makes it impossible to perform basic bodily functions, which is why death usually occurs a year after initial diagnosis. Those with the most common type of this awful disease, the H3K27M mutant, produce a substance called GD2. So what scientists did was extract the patient's own immune cells and modify them so that they targeted this particular molecule. In a trial of 11 over four years, seven saw their tumor shrink, and on average, participants lived two years longer. One person even had their cancer completely cured. Back to diabetes developments now, because a type of smart insulin that responds to changing blood sugar levels has been created. Our understanding of type 1 diabetes took a major leap forward last year, with the first ever reversal, and that was just the beginning. That's because a little before this, an international team of scientists, including teams from Stanford University in the United States, Monash University in Australia, and Zhejiang University in China, announced that they would revolutionize treatment. Currently, 
people with type 1 diabetes have to inject themselves with insulin multiple times per day. Because blood sugar levels can change so quickly, it can be difficult and stressful to keep track of them. Thankfully, this may change in the future. That's because a form of smart insulin that only requires one injection a week has been invented. Glucose-responsive insulins, or GRIs, lie dormant within the body and are only released when needed. For instance, when it detects high blood sugar, it automatically kicks in. Then, when the blood sugar lowers to an acceptable level, it turns itself off. Because it responds in real time, sufferers will no longer experience uncomfortable random spikes in blood sugar that can cause short-term and long-term health issues. Further tests will be needed before it's fully rolled out, but for now, it's looking pretty hopeful. Okay, we're at the heart of the video now, so next up, naturally, we'll talk about the heart. More specifically, an injectable pacemaker that can regulate the heartbeat for five days. To understand why this is so important, let's first take a look at how our hearts function. The steady rhythm of our heartbeats is caused by regular electrical pulses. These are produced by something called a sinus node, situated in the upper chamber of the organ. During normal activities, the sinus node generates anywhere between 60 and 100 electrical impulses, or heartbeats, per minute. Whew, one second guys, I'm a little low on battery, so I'm just gonna go charge myself up for a bit. For those with a condition known as a heart arrhythmia though, these stimuli often don't work properly. They can either be too slow and dip below 60 beats per minute, called bradycardia, or too fast and go over 100 beats per minute, tachycardia. Other times, they can lose coordination entirely, leading to an irregular heartbeat. One way to correct a heart arrhythmia is by using a defibrillator, but this is an expensive piece of equipment that's not always around. Another option is an artificial pacemaker, but this requires major surgery to get. That's why scientists have devised an alternative that's small enough to fit snugly in a first aid kit. It takes the form of a syringe with a needle that's thinner than a human hair. First off, it's injected near the heart after which it releases a solution of nanoparticles that form an electrically conducive polymer hydrogel. A cable that connects to a device like a mobile phone is then attached to a tiny hole made at the injection site. It's from this device that the hydrogel layer is fed a current of low power electricity that can regulate the heartbeat for up to five days. After this, the gel simply dissolves. So the idea here is to use the gel as an emergency temporary pacemaker that will give the patient enough time to get to a hospital for further treatment. So far, it's been successfully tested on small animals, with pigs and then eventually humans to follow suit. Next up, scientists scored another big win. A simple blood test that can predict the risk of up to 67 different diseases. In recent years, there's been a lot of excitement around the thousands of proteins circulating in our blood. Scientists have discovered that by measuring the levels of these proteins, known as biomarkers, they can predict a person's risk of developing certain illnesses later on. They've been deemed so reliable that special tests to detect early stage Alzheimer's are already being made. On the heels of this, scientists in the United Kingdom have now identified proteins that can be linked to the onset of 67 diseases. The findings came from a sample pool of 40,000 British volunteers. First, their blood was examined via an advanced analytical technique, with 5 to 20 proteins linked to each illness. After this, the prediction was compared to later diagnoses. The data showed that protein biomarkers were a greater predictor than current methods, which use blood cell counts, cholesterol, kidney function, and diabetes tests currently used as indicators. Motor neuron disease, pulmonary fibrosis, type 2 diabetes, and even dementia were just some that were more accurately picked up. Further research is still required before this can be released on a large scale, though. Another medical problem that took a beating last year was asthma. Great news for me. Because the first new treatment in 50 years has been developed. If you've ever experienced or seen someone having an asthma attack, you already have a rough idea of what's going on. During one of these episodes, inflammation causes the airways to tighten, leading to breathlessness or worse. These attacks are caused by a buildup of white blood cells called eosinophils. For the past 50 years, people with severe asthma have had to take steroid tablets to reduce inflammation leaving some patients stuck in a cycle of retreatment and rehospitalization. This is where a substance called benralizumab comes in. It neutralizes those white blood cells and is already given to patients to help them deal with the long-term symptoms of extreme asthma. 
and now a deeper investigation has revealed how it can come in handy in emergencies as well. Researchers at King's College London have illustrated that taking a single injection of benralizumab during an exacerbation helps calm it down better than steroid pills. Their key takeaway was that those who took this substance were four times less likely to fail treatment after 90 days than those who ingested tablets. Real quick before we continue, we would appreciate your support a lot. So if you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to get your weekly dose of good news. And now let's dive into another medical achievement that caught our attention last year. In November, a groundbreaking discovery that could lead to the next generation of weight loss drugs was made. Obesity is a major health issue that's on the rise around the world. And while sports and nutrition are very important, they are sometimes not enough to address obesity. Today, one of the most advanced medical approaches involves treatments based on the GLP-1 hormone. GLP-1 is a gut hormone, which when stimulated, reduces appetite and slow digestion. On the other hand, there are common side effects like vomiting and an upset stomach. Tiredness and fatigue also occur because these drugs are geared towards lowering calorie intake rather than upping the rate at which calories are burned. They also get rid of lean muscle mass, making patients frailer and weaker. It was for these reasons that the University of Copenhagen gave itself the task of developing an alternative weight loss roadmap that didn't require the GLP-1 hormone. What they did was shift focus to the central nervous system and to a receptor called neurokinin-2. They activated this receptor in test mice with their new drug. The result was an increase in calorie burning speed and a lowering of appetite that didn't cause nausea, muscle mass removal, or low energy. On the back of this, clinical trials involving humans are expected in the next two years. And that's about the time that a gel-based syringe that can stop severe bleeding in seconds may be in widespread use. Death from blood loss is a major reason why people with traumatic injuries sometimes don't make it. In a situation like this, there's only a couple of tools that paramedics can rely on. Tourniquets, gauzes, and hemostatic agents that promote blood clotting can all improve odds of survival. But preparing and implementing these medications, which often require the application of hard pressure, can sometimes take too long in a situation where every second counts. They're also not suitable for all different types of bleeding. This is where trauma gel can make a real difference to frontline emergency care. This is a preloaded syringe that injects a plant-based hemostatic gel into the center of the wound. After it's been administered, paramedics simply place a gauze over the top of it and apply moderate pressure with the palm. This can stop severe blood loss in seconds. Trauma gel is to be released later this year in the United States, where it's expected to be bought up by government health agencies and even the United States military. Last but not least is a story about a good use for AI, which has revealed nearly a million potential antibiotics that could fight drug-resistant superbugs. There are bugs, and then there are superbugs. They're mainly created when antibiotics are overused or misused, giving the bacteria a chance to adapt and grow stronger. When this happens, most of the bacteria die, but a small proportion of the most resistant often survives. These survivors then go on to replace their dead ancestors in reproduction cycles that can last as little as 20 minutes. By the end, a much stronger variant of the bacteria emerges. In contrast, finding a much stronger version of the antibiotic to stop it takes a whole lot longer. With current technology, it takes 10 to 15 years to do this because it can take forever to identify potential antibiotic candidates. This part of the process, however, has just been significantly shortened. Scholars at the University of Pennsylvania and the Queensland University of Technology used machine learning to examine the genomes of tens of thousands of bacteria. What came back was astonishing just over 850,000 molecules that damage or kill harmful microbes were identified, and 90% of them were unknown. Clinical trials in humans are now on the horizon, and assuming they go well, the new generation of antibiotics could be taken to a whole new level, thanks to the help of AI. What do you think? I mean, that's a pretty positive note to end on as far as I'm concerned. Have you heard of any other medical advancement stories, and is there a discovery that could influence or excite you in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.